Hello everyone, my name is Clancy and welcome to the Clan So without further ado, let's get into this video. But before we get into the video, please do me a favor by smashing the like button. And if you are watching and you are not subscribed, why haven't you subscribed yet? And when you subscribe, please do not forget to click the bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. So let me not waste too much of your time because I got a lot to do and I'm working from home once again. So... Let's put this into perspective by going to the knockout thing high court at the Senzo Meiwa murder trial within a trial. So as you guys already know, Bungani Tanzi is still continuing with his testimony on the witness box being cross-examined by advocate Ronin Kantla Sibanda. I see these days is not doing this or fidgeting with the mic. Clearly they watch our videos, right? Right. That's, that, you know, we need to believe that, that they watch our videos. But other than that, guys, what's up with this guy, honestly speaking? And what is up with Judge Rata? Because the moment the defense does exactly what uh, Sibanda does, he jumps and says, that question has been already answered. He said he doesn't know. But no, Sibanda can go on and on trying to chew a dry bone without meat. And Judge Rata is quiet. He says nothing. And when the defense gets up in objection for advocate Sibanda asking a question that's already answered, then he tells the judge that no, in our version. And the judge keeps quiet. He folds. Because why? I don't get it because this Ndanzi guy has been repeating the same thing from the time he took the stand while he was giving his evidence in chief with uh, Ramusipili. And, of course, the state should have taken note and said, you know what, okay, he said he doesn't know this, he doesn't know that, he doesn't know this. Now, let's ask around something like this and like this. No, this man will grab onto this dry bone like a township dog and keep chewing on it. There is no meat, sir. And I'm telling you there's no meat because of this reason. And this exercise that is continuously happening at the knockout thing I caught wasting taxpayers money is the fact that the dentist who was also a GP who also is a physician who also a specialist in the human anatomy he said there was no gold tooth okay fine let's leave that even though it plays a major role in the trial within a trial in a trial within a trial Gininda takes Ndanzi to a boardroom and ask him a series of questions. Amongst those questions is, did he ever had dreadlocks? Ndanzi said, in my life, I've never had dreadlocks. Okay, do you have a tattoo? In my life, I've never put a tattoo on my body. Okay, strip naked. He strips naked. Uh, what is Muhane? Looks all over his body, finds no tattoo. Now, remember, this is the state that introduced this evidence of tattoo, dreads, and a gold tooth. None of these three exists in the trial within a trial. So now, why are we continuously having Sibanda asking frivolous questions that already three things that they held on to as a trial within a trial that they were going to catch Ntansi on the gold tooth, the dreadlocks, and the, uh, the tattoo. Not only that, they are saying that he's fabricating these stories and yet his wrists are showing signs that the handcuffs that were put on him, he even showed it to the court like, I still have them. Here they are. And he says he was not assaulted. Even if, let's say, he was not tubed, he was not kicked and scum and donor, he's a scum and donor. But what about the marks in his wrists? What about those? Those don't, they don't count. They're just like what tattoos that were created by Hank House because he was having a kinky time with his girlfriend. Come on. Come on now. And Sibanda, the way he's asking his questions, it is clear. He knows that, you know what, we just have to do this for the sake of doing it. This is our job. We just need to be, uh, we just need to be prosecutors. That's all we have to do. But he knows from the depth of the soul, that this case was lost long time ago. Even uh, Advocate Baloya saw him today sitting as second chair. He was sitting down while Sibanda was going on around the bushes and he was huffing and puffing at a brick house and it's now going to fall down because Ndanzi, he is resolute and he is certain and his story is clear, concise 
and truthful compared to all the witnesses that Sibanda keeps asking him. Of course, they're going to deny that they took them. Of course, they're going to deny that uh, Gininda was in the boardroom. Of course, they're going to deny that they beat him. Of course, they're going to deny everything that Ndanzi said happened to him. Of course, they're going to deny that uh, Muhane was the one that was opening and closing cells at Ndanzi when he was taken to police station and the same person will come and unlock the prison cell or the jail cells and take Ndanzi away. And they say, no, the logbook says this. Okay, fine, the logbook may say that. Now, the defense, what they need to do is go to all these police stations and collect these, um, these OB books. And then from there, they compare handwritings. Is it a handwriting of a police officer that is in that particular station when Danzi was uh, placed? Or is it a handwriting of somebody else? And also, Mukhani himself need to write down or they take something without him having to because he may change or try to change his handwriting. Get other documents that he has written, handwritten before and see and compare these handwritings. These things are simple. This is simple to catch them on their lies. Sibanda accuses Ndanzi of fabricating things. And in my mind, I'm like, but then let's go to the tattoo. Let's go to the dreadlocks. And also, let's go to all the other stuff that you guys, or the gold tooth, that you guys, the state, presented on the table and said, oh, well, you are the one that was the intruder. You had a gold tooth. You had dreadlocks and a tattoo. None of the three exist. Isn't that a fabrication? And why do you not ask Ndanzi since he's denying all the other things and put it to him that I tell you that you're fabricating that you never had a gold tooth. I put it to you that you're fabricating that you never had a tattoo. I put it to you that you're fabricating that you did not have dreadlocks. Why are they not canvassing that? That's because they know if they did, they're going to have egg on their face. I'm not going to talk about the DNA clearing Danzi and all the other four co-accused of his because that isn't the main trial. But this also included just for the sake of adding the evidence that shows that Ndanzi was never at the Kumalo house on the 26th of October 2014. Never was there. And the interesting part about the AVL, even the state itself admitted that Ndanzi's story was corroborating or worth the AVL. But because, you know, uh, Sabanda is known to hold on to a dry bone and go, <laughs> like a township dark, and it's not producing, it's not even flinching blood or anything, nothing, it's dry. The meat was eaten decades ago. Let it go, Mr. Sibanda. It makes no sense what you are doing. Honestly, it's making the state look idiotic. The other part of that way I saw that, oh, this man is trying it. Remember when he asked Ndanzi if when he was being tubed, he screamed. In my mind, I'm thinking we need an expert here. We need an expert who's going to tell the state this question is dumb dumb. Who screams when you take a plastic bag and then you put it over their face and you rob them of their breath? Because the first thing that your mind is trying to get at is for you to breathe oxygen. The last thing that you want to do is scream. Secondly, you are in a GTI. Windows are closed. Doors are closed. Everybody is just on top of you. Who is going to hear you on the outside? I think I see the signs around why it was not done in the Fortuna. Because the Fortuna, when you sit at the back, the chair between the driver and the back and the passenger in the back, there is space. Even if you push the chair far enough, they will still have enough space for their knees. But why the GTI? Because the moment you just push the chair a little bit back, the people at the back, they will not have, they will have this much of space. So it's, I believe that it corroborates over what Ntanzi says that they pinned him with the chair as well, that the, the driver's chair at the back. So that they are able to do the evil that they did to him, being held down and also being too with his hands at the back. Of course, when you are being tubed and you are robbed of your breath, you're going to twitch. You're going to twitch. Screaming? Screaming? Who is going to hear? Let's do that experiment on your own, but please, don't, 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 okay, no, no, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. it. It's terrible. It's terrible. But then here is Sibanda says, he decides. When Danza said, no, I cried. I cried. Then he uses 
and twists his words and says, when you screamed, I'm like, sir, why are you lying through? Uh, why are you lying to the court? He did not say he screamed. He said he cried. That's when you realize that shame, the state is really shooting in the dark and hoping to hit something in Danzi, but they keep missing. Sibanda keeps missing. It's clear that the state understands that they lost this case. It's clear as daylight that any imbecile that is out there in the world, even a 30 percenter, you know, you still have a brain, you know? They'll be like, mm, yeah, that doesn't make sense. There is no way that a 30 percenter also failed biology at 30 percent. Honestly speaking, I, I doubt that. I seriously doubt that. He did not say he screamed. He said he cried. There's a difference. And secondly, if you look at the... Um, and the second thing, Danza said when they went and parked at the ancient garage, they went to the far end of the garage. Of course, it, it's, and, it's at the, and secondly, it's at the back. Of course, who's going to hear you when they are on the other side of the garage? Secondly, they are at the far end of the parking lot. Clearly, this was an elaborate plan on how they are going to conduct this evil so that nobody is a witness and nobody hears anything that goes on in the back of the garage. Not Judge Rata quiet again. He's quiet at questions that have been answered already by Danzi. I'm not quite sure what this means or why he was doing what he's doing because just Friday, was it Friday or Thursday, there was a question that I think the state asked, uh, was it was Sibia or Sibanda? I mean, was it Sibia or Ndanzi? And the judge stood up and um, the judge said he said he doesn't know. And I'm like, I hope you are going to have the same energy when the state also asks repetitive questions to the witness. No, he did not do it. Why doesn't he do it? Because, of course, the state always favored by this judge. And, of course, that is why Sibanda also tries to get away with as many things as he can because he knows that, that they are highly favored. The other thing that I also realized that the state is seriously losing is at the fact that Sibanda was trying to butt heads with Mgome Zulu and his client, that being Danzi. Of course, this is not a train smash that just because Ndanzi said something else, understand, yet Ngome Zulu said something else. It does not bear any weight, I believe. What matters is that what evidence is put on the table? They put on the table a gold tooth. They put on the table tattoo. They put on the table dreadlocks. They put on the table uh, the, the hat, DNA. Okay, that is the matrix of the DNA. But these three things for me, I cannot let go of them because they brought it up. The state brought it up. And that is why now they are with an egg on their faces and they are trying to fumble and stumble over and trip over each other by trying to, to repeat questions, by trying to try and confuse the witness as well as mislead the court at the same time. Now, let's also not forget about the fourth element that the very state introduced, Danzi's heart condition. Ndanzi never had a heart condition. If Ndanzi had a heart condition, he would not have been able to work, let alone get the re-employment for another mining company. He, that would not have happened if he had a heart problem, sight problem, hearing problem, TB, HIV, all that stuff that was mentioned by Ndanzi, that he would not have gotten a job if he had a heart condition. And the dentist is the one also that brought up this heart condition thing which has absolutely nothing to do with teeth. Not only Ndanzi had dreadlocks, gold tooth, a tattoo, and a heart condition, but he also had other conditions as well that um, handcuffs injuries on his wrists. The state keeps saying it's a fabrication. When the state is the one that's doing the fabrication, we understand that this case is a fabrication. This entire case, the main trial, the trial within a trial, and whatever else that the state is trying to cook, all of it cooked up. It's a fabrication. There is nothing that Sibia and Danzi has said on the stand that is a fabrication. Absolutely nothing. So now can the state rest so that we come to an end of this charade, this circus, this joke, this nonsense, as Rata had put it on Friday, when was it? Wednesday, I think it was. Honestly speaking, and save taxpayers' money. This money could go to so many things. In Haman Scroll, people are crying about dirty water that has killed people. 
Why are we wasting the taxpayers' money on a trial that is frivolous? It makes no sense. Seven people we would send to Meiwa on the 26th of October 2014. Go get them. The truth is there. Who killed Senzo Meiwa? That's the justice that the Meiwas have been waiting for. Please do that. The five men that stand accused of killing Senzo Meiwa are not the right people. Yes, the other ones may be, uh, may be convicted for heinous crimes. And I don't support that. As a matter of fact, they deserve the sentences that they have. But pinning a murder they did not commit, that's wrong, unethical. It's just not right. Hey, another thing that I just remembered, remember when Tanzi, when the, the Nongoma story came up, that he was charged with Nongoma case, and then uh, Danzi said, no, me nan shain I'm known to shain zam. If I'm not at work, I'm at home. At home, I sing, I dance. Even Inko Osi knows me. When he mentioned about Inko Osi, guess what Sibande does? He abandons that question of Nongoma altogether because the last thing he wants is getting Inkosi coming to the court and speaking in favor of Ndanzi. So he abandoned that one very quickly because he was going to prolong it until Ndanzi said, no, uh, even Inkosi. And this is when, did you even hear the tone of Sibanda's voice when he goes like, um, I, I did not ask you about that. Anyways, let's move on. Why didn't you continue on that dry bone? You knew that in the moment he mentions the Nkosi, they are going to be brought to speak on behalf of Ndanzi and, your, and once again, another egg on your face. And by the way, Nongoma, it is where the king of the Zulus live. That's where the palace is. So I'm not quite sure Nkosi, which one he was. I know he would say Isilo if he's talking about the Zulu king, but he said Nkosi. So that can be translated or interpreted as a chief, but it can also be interpreted as king. The king. So I think that's why Sibanda abandoned that question so quickly, like a hot potato. He was like, oh, okay, this one is too much. Let's move on to the next question. Again, it shows that these people are being intimidated and trying to be pinned with a murder they did not commit. But anyways, that is our South Africa today. Who are we being led by? And how are we as South Africans are going to correct this? Because it's in our hands to correct all of this before we found our, find ourselves with our loved one. Your son, if you have a son. Yourself, if you're a male. AKA's case is still unresolved or solved. They don't have a suspect. You may wake up one morning being pinned with that murder. So that it does not happen to you and the right person that killed, uh, aka be found, convicted, prosecuted and convicted. We need to change this. Us. With our, you know, we need to change it. It's us. South Africa, it is today because of us. Us, the people. The people shall govern. That is the principle or the motto of this country. So if we're going to roll over and play dead, well, don't be surprised when you are pinned with a crime you did not commit. Do not be surprised. Do not be surprised when your son is accused of a crime he did not commit or even convicted of a crime he did not commit. There are men who are spending time in prison that make sure that this particular situation we are in, they voted for it. They must not be surprised why they are there. So now, the us who are free, we need to change this. It is in our hands for crying out loud. It's in our hands. I'm not going to say who to vote for. That's up to you. That's you and your conscience. That's you and your future. And that's you and your freedom. That's all I'm going to say to you. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening to me. I know at the end, I became a little bit emotional. That's because this is very upsetting. As South Africans, we all should be outraged by this. All of us. If you like the video, give it a like. If you didn't like the video, give it a like. Anyways, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to click the bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much to everybody that's super thanking the channel and supporting it financially. You guys are doing such a wonderful job by financially supporting this channel. It means a lot because a lot of stuff 
I'm able to do, like paying the Wi-Fi, like all the other stuff that I'm able to do with the money, I'm able to bring these videos to you. It costs money, you know? <laughs> yeah, it does. Also, please leave me a comment down below and let me know what did you think about the proceedings today at the North Houghton High Court? What did you think about Sibanda's uh, cross-examination? Anyways, guys, also share this video far and wide. I'll see you next time with a new video. Goodbye.